we may have gotten just a little impatient with NFTs. Man, I mean, to be honest, I think culture is everything. Could you think of a famous historical example of someone in D-God mode? Hi guys, and welcome to What's The Meta. I'm your host, Ryan S. Gladwin, and I'm joined by a president today. Not Joe Biden, it's Sonny, the president of D-Gods. <laughs> How are you, mate? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm all good. I'm all good. It's at the end of the week when we're recording. I'm excited for the weekend. Despite NFTs sort of falling off in many ways from their heyday in 2021, D-Gods is one of the few projects that are still kind of popping. My question to you, Sonny, very simple, is why? Honestly, I think it's it, it's one of those things where I think we've created a really core community, kind of like your diehard members, if you would, people that have stuck around since the very beginning, people that wanted to join along the way, and very much just established a, a name in this space that, you know, it, 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 it's one that it rings off, it's, it's brand awareness, it gets attention, people know the name, you know, obviously, to a certain degree. And I think because of those things, and, and because of our, you know, the community that we have, a lot of the people that represent us, you know, whether it be on Twitter, the people that are connecting through other channels, whatever. But I think because of that, it's it, it's it's really carried us through up up until this point. Yeah, definitely. I, I think with NFTs in particular in crypto, it's this idea of community and culture, really. And it's one of the things that really interested me about NFTs last bull run, but it, maybe even more now because it feels like those communities have had time to really foster and evolve that that culture what would you say d god culture is man i think d god's culture is just a it, it's one of those things where i think it's very much just kind of like fucking around and finding out you know it's it's you know we have a a community full of people that are creators entrepreneurs founders thinkers leaders people that have come from all walks of life have a bunch of different experiences and you know, kind of come together in this group and, and really want the camaraderie, you know, support each other, you know, as you say, bros being bros. And I think a, a lot of that has led to the, you know, the type of people that we've been able to attract and, and, and want to be a part of this and kind of want to be a part of the D-Gods culture. You know, it's just putting your best self forward every day and kind of representing that. Yeah, 100%. It's, I'm interested as someone who's involved in like the core team at D-Gods, how do you deal with, anyone could buy a D-God NFT. What if someone buys that NFT and is a bit of a bad egg and isn't, isn't just good vibes, isn't bros just being bros and yeah, is, is, is out there sort of changing the culture but in a bad way yeah i mean to be honest we've we, we've had that along the way you know and as someone that you know i i, I started as you know a community member i minted my d god and have very much have, have just been kind of like an advocate and a voice within the community and just supporting the the brand itself since the very beginning and you know i've seen the times that we've had our community be very very strong and unified and i've seen us where we weren't as you know, strong and unified and to your point, had those kind of bad eggs within the community. And I think to a certain degree during those times, it was kind of like figuring out navigating how to deal with it and kind of how to deal with, you know, the divisiveness a little bit. But I think we're at a point where for now it's, you know, we have a, a token gated telegram, for example, and it's just like, if you don't really fit with the culture, if you don't really fit with the vibes, then you know, you're not necessarily getting behind the token gated platforms and getting to getting to build with everybody else. And and really what we found is like a lot of those same people that were bad eggs for so long, they're trying to like switch up their tune a little bit because, you know, they're having the FOMO of like, why am I not allowed in there? I own the NFT and, and, and all of these things. And it's just like, you know, that's what happens when the, when the energy comes back around and, and you kind of see all the people rooting and supporting and, and, and kind of pushing D-Gods forward again. And so, yeah, I think with the bad apples, it's it, it's really just about, you know, obviously you won't get access to some token gated things like the chats or, or resources, that sort of thing. And, you know, on the timeline in a public way, you may not get the, the support that other people are getting based off of just maybe kind of how you're acting or, or you know, to this point too, it's like, a little bit about how people have acted in the in the past too and and it's been you know a long 
long, long acting period, right? It's not just like a one day thing or two days. It's like, no, you've been, you know, acting like this for six months, nine months, a year, whatever the case is. <laughs> and if we just notice those things, I think it's just about protecting our community and protecting the culture for the people that are pushing it forward. And why do you think culture is important? Man, I mean, to be honest, I think culture is everything. You know, even when we look at, even when we look at, you know, like kind of technology and blockchain as a whole, right? Like I've been on, I've been on Solana for, you know, since kind of the beginning of the NFT ecosystem and kind of been like a maxi, if you would, and, and that sort of thing. And when you look at, you know, something like what Solana even has been able to build, it's this aspect of just like a really true organic community and culture and people behind it that are pushing this forward, wanting to build here, wanting to represent, wanting to see this through, even through, you know, some of the most down periods. And when you look at something like that, it's like that, you know, what they've been able to build is it is just culture organically. I think Bitcoin is very much, you know, something similar where there's you know, you have Bitcoin, but you very much have like this Bitcoin culture of, you know, people, you know, whether it's like anti-establishment or this kind of like independent to banks and digital gold and, and all of these things. Right. And so I think it's one of those things that when you really think about culture, that's kind of what pushes tech forward, because it's like this it's like this belief and this just this way that people come together around something. And a lot of it is just like you can't necessarily like you can man make it to a certain degree. But a lot of these things, like a lot of the examples that I've even mentioned up until this point it's like there's real lore that has come along the way to make that culture what it is right whether you look at like the ftx crash or whether you look at everything bitcoin's been through and so when i look at d god it's you know something similar we've had our down periods we've had our high periods and we've had key moments and things along the way that really make the story what it is and and make people want to be a part of that journey but i think that's what you know that's a lot what culture is and why culture is so important because it gives people something to align with and align their beliefs with and and connect with other people over yeah definitely i recently there was a podcast that went out and someone was talking about a article i wrote recently about basically a meme coin dev smoked a whole bunch of drugs passed out on stream i ended up interviewing him and writing about it and and some people were like why are we even speaking about this stuff but to me i feel like i'm documenting one of the most interesting places on the internet i, I feel like crypto culture is so interesting and and like you say like culture well tech is the future of what what we'll be using our everyday lives like the iphone when it first came out was just what it was and the way cultures and communities formed around it is shaped how the iphones become today and i think it's the exact same in crypto communities like d gods in ways are shaping how crypto is going to to move forward one thing i am interested in hearing your opinion on is we've started seeing sort of like culture coins exist in the meme coin world giga chad's a great example of a group of sort of people that would define themselves as alpha male and they've all collected around a meme coin. What's the benefit of doing that as an NFT compared to doing that as a meme coin? I think it's a couple of things, right? When you look at some of like the biggest culture coins, whether it's Giga Chad, whether it's a Mog, whether it's, you know, Pepe or you, you, even a couple new thing, new coins that we've seen. I think the similarities are a lot in this aspect of like art and some sort of representation, right? Like obviously with Mog, you have like the pit vipers and you have people that put it onto their PFPs, right? With Giga Chad, you have like the filter that people put on either themselves or on their PFPs or, or, or whatever the case is. And so, you know, I think when you look at NFTs, it's it's one of those things where it's like there was always an art representation right there, right? Like a D God's PFP is like that's your like that's your like signal of like I'm a part of this group, I'm a part of this culture, I'm a part I like I have this status or this is my digital identity, whatever the case is. And I think with meme coins, it's like they've kind of employed that a little bit as well when you think of some of the things that like some of the major culture coins have, right? I think with meme coins though, what's pretty great about it is that you know, you're able to get so many more users, right? Like with, with NFTs, it's like limited to the 10,000 NFTs or 
whatever you, the supply is of your collection. Um, but with something like a meme coin, it's just like, you know, someone can be a smaller holder. Someone can hold maybe, let's say, $300 worth of MOG, or someone can hold $3,000 or $30,000 worth of MOG. And all of them feel a part of it. All of them may be signifying in some sort of way that they're a part of it. And so, yeah, I think between meme coins and just the NFTs, obviously there's different structures and dynamics, but I think in the in the kind of core of it of of what kind of makes that culture is like you have certain things that signify you being a part of that kind of movement or culture, you know, if you would. Yeah, definitely. I I think NFT cultures, like you say, more tight knit, whereas meme coin culture coins can spread further, but maybe less concentrated like, like a D gods. What is your opinion on NFTs in 2024 and going into 2025? To me, it's like there's a reason why all of us on crypto Twitter still are using PFPs to a certain degree right? And we're still signaling certain things as our digital identity. And we've seen so many great things come out from, you know, from NFT projects that are still around, still cooking up, you know, great things from Azuki. I've seen their kind of like short form content on Instagram to, I think they just launched something like anime.com and, and they've been pushing things forward on the content. And you've got you know, projects like Pudgy Penguin that I've been pushing forward for, for IP and consumer apps and consumer IP. Clanosaurs is another one that's doing something similar to that. You have Doodles too, that's like coming out with like a whole movie, I think, and, and having a premiere. And so it's one of those things where I think we may have gotten just a little impatient with NFTs. And I think we may have just, you know, obviously we had a lot of NFTs that didn't make it to these points and, you know, maybe lost you know lost along the way obviously you have some that were bad actors whatever the case is right but for the ones that are pushing forward and have continued to build and continue to kind of push things towards like the vision that they're trying to bring out i think nfts just you know they just make sense you know even from a even from a perspective of like we've seen so much on rwas right nfts that represent some sort of real world asset to a degree like whether it's a uh, pokemon cards or sports cards or you know even greater than that any like sort of collectible item whatever the case is and i think there's just so many different types of use cases to nfts that we're still kind of scratching the surface on and so for me i think it's i think it's something where you know i definitely think we see an nft bull run again i definitely do think that we see attention and hype back to nfts but you know, there's a lot of real, real brands that are building natively from crypto and Web3 through an NFT project. And I do believe that a lot of those are going to be household names one day. And 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 really, it's just about, you know, it, it, it's time, right? It, it, it takes time. They're not going to, you're not going to get this overnight. And I think that was the biggest thing where it's like, where we've had a lot of people needing to adjust to that. Um, and I think we're getting to that point now where it's, you know, people are a little bit adjusted. People have a little bit better expectations, I guess you could say. And yeah, that's kind of where I see, you know, NFTs now and, and how I see them moving forward for sure. I think the way you characterize them as brands is really interesting. And I think very accurate. Like you said, the, the do doodles doing the whole movie thing and pudgy penguins with the toys. These are becoming brands that are really, they've got more grandiose plans than a, a meme coin, for example. Because in many ways for this ball run that we've been experiencing so far, it feels like meme coins kind of replaced NFTs in a sense. But like you say, these NFT projects that are still existing, they're building bigger things than just sort of let's raid people on Twitter and make a few good memes. It's sort of let's make a movie. Let's get our pudgy penguins into Walmart. One NFT community that is particularly interesting to me. And every time I look at them, I'm, it's just like, what the hell is going on over there is Milady. What, what's your yeah. what's your take on the Milady community? Because that that's sort of it started as one project and now it's like a million projects that have all mutated and are all beefing each other and stuff like that. What's your take on that community? Yeah, no, I mean you have a lot of derivatives that have come out from it. Uh, you know, inspirations. You know, I think Milady's. You know, obviously that community and that project has definitely led the way for a lot of this kind of meme coin stuff. I think you've had a lot of people come out from, you know, come out from that community that, you know, made some of these successful coins, obviously been a part of it. But 
I think they were kind of one of the communities that brought back this kind of essence of like, hey, like, you know, this is about the community. This is about the network effect that you have. This is about the, you know, the art that you have. And there's nothing more, right? There's, there's, there's not like this crazy utility or like, hey, holding a lady gets you this or that or or whatever it is. And I think that's a lot of what, you know, NFT started as, and we kind of needed to get back to that. And so I think they've kind of, you know, led the way a little bit as far as, uh, as far as earlier this year on just like getting back to that essence of NFTs. I think, you know, they're just going to kind of continue, you know, continue on that pathway of, of, Hey, this is like, a really cool community that you want to be a part of. This might be some, you know, dope art that you want as your GFP or you want it to represent. And there's not, there's not going to be some crazy, crazy utility or, or, or something behind it. And like, that's, that's where the value comes from. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, shout out to them. They've, they've definitely been them and, and a lot of their community members. And obviously these other like communities and projects that have come up off them have definitely been super, super uh, successful this cycle for sure. Yeah. That whole ecosystem of projects is to me, one of the most interesting places in crypto and on the internet. It's, I can't tell what is a joke and what is real. Uh, it feels kind of punk in a weird way. And yeah, it's, it's, it's super, super interesting. Talking about sort of the origins of NFTs, can you sort of take me back to when you first got involved with D-Gods? What, why did you, what attracted you to the project? Why did you mint a D-God and how did you become the president of D-Gods? Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, it, it, it was one of those things. I mean, it was the early Solana days. And at that time, I was kind of minting a bunch of different projects. And it was funny because around that time too, there was kind of this thing going on where it's like you'd mint a project and for whatever reason like people would just they would list it for under whatever the mint price was like kind of right after right when it got to secondary and it would just make people upset because it was just like what the hell is wrong with you guys like <laughs> why would you mint this for two soul and then list it for one and a half literally a day later and so i remember when dgods was coming you know obviously they had this thing called paper hands bitch tax which was essentially just like this concept of taxing you if you listed it under the floor and they would take that and then like burn D gods from it and try and make it deflationary and all that. But, you know, I think the, it, it was kind of that idea of paper hands bitch tax that very much like, you know, got me involved. I know it very much rallied a bunch of other people to like want to be a part of it. That's where like 33.3% comes from. That's why a bunch of people like, you know, either had that in their names or, or, or whatever the case is. And then I think there was just like this attitude from the team, but mostly like, you know, Frank, Frank himself, like he was kind of leading the way when it kind of came to like communications and would just commu communicate in a way that was like, I would say kind of gave that kind of like anti-corporate type of culture and like vibe to it. And was just like, you know, he'd curse, he'd say like certain things and just kind of, you know, be blunt about things and, and whatever the case is. And so that's kind of what attracted me to the, to the project. And of course, you know, seeing the artwork, it was different than what was coming out at the time, you know, everything was kind of like an animal or this like, you know, like some other type of character. And then you have this like D gods character. That's like this kind of human looking, obviously like human looking PFP and everything like that. And so I think the artwork itself just looked different. And yeah, that's kind of what just kind of like sunk me in. And, and for whatever the case is, I minted what you see as my PFP today on Twitter. And, you know, that was probably my best mint ever just based off of like rarity and everything like that. But when I saw it and I saw the like the basketball jersey and like the fade and, and whatnot, I think, you know, like how many people have seen like NFTs before, there was just kind of like this kind of like this digital identity aspect to, to this NFT. And so I made it my PFP then and and kind of made the decision that I was going to deep dive into this community as far as just like being a part of it, pull posting, working your bags before we even talked about working your bags. And and yeah, it's just it, it, it was just a great experience, like right off the rip, because we weren't necessarily successful right out the gate. Right. Like the first four months of D Gods was pretty bumpy ride as far as just like floor price and, you know, the team finding, you know, things that are going to be successful and and really kind of like 
push the project forward. Like that first four months was definitely a little bit of a bumpy road. But one thing that stayed true was like right, right after Mint, it was like the community was just super strong. And they just like connected over over the artwork, connected over, you know, what the team was doing and kind of having this mentality of like, hey, we're going to experiment. We're going to pivot if things don't work. And we're just going to keep trying to like push this push this thing forward. Even when I was like on Twitter, because I've always kind of been more of a Twitter person than like Discord or, or anything like that. And there was just like all the support between between us D gods, right? Like we would retweet each other's stuff, we would like it, comment on things, and I think it helped just a lot of us like grow each other's platforms. And yeah, just kind of like continue that path like all the way, you know, all the way as 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 much as I could, right? I just kept fully getting deeper into it. Um, I started like making merch. I started connecting with more people. I started like the merch thing kind of led to me like hosting some events that were specific on like basketball events and like doing this kind of like pickup games, you know, type of event within crypto and, and kind of seeing if there was even a market for that, found that there was and kind of continued that through. And that kind of just kept snowballing into things like, working with the killer threes, getting to meet a bunch of holders, IRL. And so, yeah, when the president thing came around, I think it was one of those things where I kind of put my name in the hat, if you would, without really thinking too much of it. And then a lot of people from the community were just like, yeah, no, you'd be the perfect person. Like I'm backing Sonny and like all this sort of stuff. And I kind of just like, I don't know. It was, it was, I, I was taken aback by it a little bit. And I was like, oh damn, like, you know, people actually think like, I should be in this role, you know, like a little, like part of me was kind of like, I'm just throwing my name in the hat, you know, like, I don't know if I'm necessarily the person for it, if I'm going to be it or, or whatever. But when the role came out, I think it was also at a time when, you know, the team itself internally was just kind of going through a lot as far as like changes to the team needing to kind of fix the internal culture. And I think Frank too, just kind of needed to spend a little bit more time internally than externally. And he's always been so great when it comes to just being at the forefront and like getting attention, connecting with people and all that sort of thing. And so, yeah, I think I just kind of, you know, just tried to step in and just compliment as much as possible and just focus on communication <laughs> and content and, and the community itself and just kind of building that up and, and uh, being a complimentary piece to kind of whatever they needed at the time. Yeah. So the president role was sort of an election. You're, you're an elected president. Well, yeah, a little bit. Well, it, it was funny because it was like it wasn't necessarily like a full on election from the community because like Frank itself was very much like, oh, I'm going to like hand select who these who these people are so there wasn't necessarily like a vote or anything but it was like i had like tweeted about it and put my name you know kind of put my name in the hat of like wanting to be a part of it and there's like a little application process or whatever and then through that you know i got you know i got a, a call from frank and we kind of talked about it through a little bit what it would be what they look like what they you know kind of wanted to see out of it but you know, I think even going into it, I think for myself, I think for them, I don't, I don't think we truly knew like what the role was going to turn into. And for me, I was just, you know, for me, it was just about like taking it, owning it and like, how big can I take this and, and, and how much impact can I have for the community if I am going to be in this role? And, and that was kind of just always my thought process behind it. And so it was kind of a, a, a thing where it was just like, Whatever I think we had started from and what, what we thought about it, I don't think I don't think either party saw that it was going to be like what it is today and like what I've, you know, been able to do like this year and that sort of thing. Yeah. When, when was that? That was at the end of last year is when the like the whole president thing went live. OK, so like I think November is when it got announced and then December is when like decisions happened and like announcements and everything like that. And it's kind of just been rolling through this entire year so during that time under your uh, your tenure as president how has the gods evolved oh man i mean i came in at a time when it was kind of like you know i wouldn't say we were necessarily at like the lowest but we were definitely at a pretty low period just based off of coming off of season three and kind of how that affected the community you know when price change and fluctuates that changes things within the community and so we were kind of coming off like some kind of low periods within our lore, I guess you could say, you know, my main focus was always just like, you know, being that kind of representative, right? That's kind of what I saw the presidency as is like, 
you know, you're kind of like this face and representative of the brand and how to do that in a, in a well-mannered way. And, you know, along my time, I've seen a lot of, lot of dope people from the space join the community. Obviously recently with the whole telegram change and like new energy into the project, that's been super great. But I think we've just like spent the year just like continuing to build relationships with different people and, and projects and companies along the way and continue to kind of just keep the brand relevant, you know? And I think that that is honestly one of the, that's like more than half the battle is just relevancy as an NFT project. You know, I think all of that has kind of led to this aspect of, of being able to, now that, you know, you can put even more behind it and, and you made that move to Telegram and kind of re-energize the community a bit. I think that comes a lot from this aspect of just, you know, keeping the brand relevant and keeping working and like collaborating with people within the space. Earlier, you mentioned law as like a, a big thing for NFT projects, meme coins as well, and maybe just crypto as a whole, really. We, we've got so much law going on all the time. What is some key D God law points that people should know about? Oh, man, I think, you know, obviously paper hands, bitch stacks. I think that was very key, like early, early lore point, because that kind of rallied the community a lot in the very, very initial stages. We had the announcement dust, which, you know, at, at the time that it was announced, it was like this aspect of like, it's only, you know, the only way to get dust is by staking a D God. So it's very fair in the way that it's just mined and definitely dead. Dead Gods. Dead Gods is a huge, huge part of, of our history because I think everybody just views it as kind of like this moment in time, like people know where they were, or they remember like transcending their D-God into a dead God and seeing that new art for the first time. Let's see what else. Buying the basketball team part as well, because that was a pretty huge thing. And around that time, like Ice Cube had bought a D-God too. So that was kind of sick. <laughs> you know, obviously going through it and doing like Utes and Ute List, that was a huge part of the lore, seeing everybody that was getting onto Ute List and kind of that whole mechanic of like announcing people on Twitter before you know, before things got suspended, people that got announced on Twitter, that was a huge part of things. And just like, you know, becoming the, the kind of like number one project on Solana and like holding that spot for like a very, I want to say like maybe eight, nine months of the entire year that year. What was that? 2022? Just being that kind of number one number one spot on Solana. All of that has like really been deep parts of the lore. And then you know, obviously you have some of the other things too, like the FTX crash. That was a big thing as, you know, affected everybody on Solana, obviously. Definitely affected us. But one thing that I found is that like when that crash happened and like, you know, hit on the price and everything, it was one of those things where it's like we got a lot of new people and dope people a part of the community because at some point we had like reached like, I think like the USD floor price of maybe around like 1500 or 2000. And it's like that got ate up so quick because a lot of people that were like sidelined or always wanted to be a part of it. Like I've met so many people that are like, oh, my God, like I got my entry through like the FTX crash. And like, I'm, I'm so happy that like that happened. And so it's <laughs> like, you know, it's like obviously not happy that FTX crash happened, but it's like just the <laughs> ability to get, you know, your entry to D-Gods. If you've always wanted to be a part of it was great. And. You know, obviously we have the, the whole thing of like leaving, leaving Solana and going to Polygon and going to ETH and like doing the bridge and, and that sort of thing. And while like people may f have mixed feelings towards it, you know, obviously there's probably still people to this day that will talk talk bad about us because of it or whatever the case is. But all that is, you know, all of that is part of the lore and just part of this aspect of like, hey, it's always been about experimenting, putting the community first, and just us going through high times, tough times, when people are for us, when people are against us, whatever the case is, and just continuing to kind of push through that. And so those are probably a lot of like the key points of, of the lore. And I honestly, I would even say that like season three, you know, when we tried to do another art upgrade and we like put out points parlor, even though it didn't go the way that we thought it would go, even though it didn't go the way that we wanted it to go or, or anything like that, it was one of kind of like the, the lowest points that we've seen as part of the community. And, you know, I think if you can celebrate the very, very high times, it's like you have to 
look at some of those low times too and take that into account is like that's part of the lore because we've been able to get past that get through that and get to where we are today where it's like we still here still relevant have gone through highs and lows and we still have people that are really really die hard for this community want to be a part of it new people joining all the time and i think that tells this kind of like beautiful story i guess if you would of just kind of like going from a project that was written off underdogs to number one to making hard decisions to back down again coming back and 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 we're still on the road to come back right and and trying to get back to some of those peaks but yeah i I think that's the fun part about this all right and all of that is very much like real life lore you know what i'm saying it's not anything that was fictionalized it was not anything that was like we had to make this this story for it no these were all things that just like happened along our journey and along our way and i think that's what makes it that's what makes it so great one thing that came to my attention recently following a decrypt article by Erica, which sort of highlighted this to me. What's D-God mode? D-God mode. Well, first, shout out to Erica. She wrote an incredible article. She's written some stuff about us in the past too. And yeah, she just always does a a, a really, really great job. But D-God mode is, you know, it, it's just this mentality of being your best self, peak performance. And when you're in that mode, like, that's what you're in. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you're in. That's what you're striving for. And it's just our version of that, right? That's really like the true essence of it. Could you think of a famous historical example of someone in D-God mode? Famous historical example. Let's see. If I'm thinking sports, honestly, this was against my team. I'm a Warriors fan. But like, when LeBron came back 3-1 against the Warriors, he was definitely in D-God mode. Like, I remember when Michael Phelps won all those all those Olympic gold medals. Like, he was definitely in D-God mode, you know? Like, you just hit, like, this kind of... You just kind of hit this different zone. And and I think that's, that's very much what it's about. I don't know if you saw the movie Air about, like, Nike signing Michael Jordan. You know, Nike early days and how they were able to sign Michael Jordan. Definitely, definitely. Definitely Phil Knight and them were, were in D-God mode when they were going after him, recruiting <laughs> yeah. him, not taking no for an answer and just like continuing <laughs> to build out. And obviously they built one of the most iconic sneakers ever. So, you know, even from a business standpoint, like that's, you know, that's definitely one of those things too. We're running out of time. So I've got one last question for you, Sonny. What is your prediction on what will happen to the NFT landscape coming over the next year? Ooh, over the next year, you know, kind of going back to crypto native brands, it's going to be another year where, you know, these brands and projects have been able to build, establish more, hopefully onboard more people along the way, even if it's not owning the NFT, but just being fans of what they're building out. That's how you very much expand your NFT collection project is like you want people that also are just rooting for you and 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 kind of aligned with your brand, even if they don't own the NFT itself. And so I think over the course of the next year, we're going to see a lot of that. And we're just going to see a lot more of these native brands be at a at a a bigger scale. And hopefully, you know, we're, we see that kind of NFT bull market be sparked back around and an attention from people that are in this space. It be on NFTs. People are buying NFTs. Obviously, price go up. We, we love when that happens. I think that's what we see over the course of the next year is, is kind of that attention being redirected back to it. So you could say maybe the NFT market is going to enter D-God mode. NFT market <laughs> is going to enter D-God mode over the course of this next year. I love that. Let's go. Okay. Thank you so much, Sonny. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it.